take a quick look at our homework that we had over the break, worksheet number three, questions four and seven. Starting with number four. Number four says, a 1,500 kilogram car traveling at 100 kilometers per hour to the south. It's been a long time since we've done anything, right? We had nine days off. But we can't forget little things like this. We see a south, let's circle it. Circle it in red to remind ourselves later on that it's going to be a negative value. Collides with a 1,200 kilogram car traveling north at 100 kilometers per hour. This is north, so I'm going to circle that, but not because I got to really worry about the north per se, just that I got to worry about the difference between the north and the south. The heavier car continues to move south after the collision. What slows to 25 kilometers per hour? How fast is the lighter car moving after the collision? Now, there's something else that I probably could circle here as well in red. Uh, kilometers per hour, right? 100 kilometers per hour, uh, 25 kilometers per hour. Tell you what, though. When you're solving a conservation of momentum problem, you can actually get away with using kilometers per hour. Anybody want to suggest to me why I can do that? Can't do it with impulse. Got to use meters per second. Can't do it with acceleration, got to use meters per second. But when I'm doing conservation momentum, I can still use meters per second. That always works. But I can also get away with kilometers per hour. How come? Yeah, the units end up canceling out, right? If you look at M1, V1I plus M2, V2I, V appears in every term. Now, it's not the same number that appears in every term, so you can't cancel out the value for velocity, but the same units appear in every term, so you can cancel out the units. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, go back to meters per second because it always works. It just means a little bit of extra work in a question like this. Okay. This is a conservation of momentum problem. This is a collision. Anytime we have a collision or explosion, we do conservation of momentum. Now, one of these cars will gain momentum and one will lose momentum. So if we wanted to analyze one of the individual objects, we could use impulse, right? The change in momentum of one of the individual objects. We're choosing to analyze the system, so we're going to use conservation of momentum. Now that we've taken a look at the big picture of this problem, let's take a look at what our givens are. We're going to say M1 is 1.50 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. Now, we're going to say V1i, V1i, we're going to say is negative 100 kilometers per hour. And again, feel free to convert that to meters per second by dividing by 3.6. That always works. But because you're dividing every of the, all the velocities by 3.6, it ends up giving you the same answer. So whatever you want to do there. We're saying negative because it's to the south, though, right? We're going to say M2 is 1.20 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. And we're going to say V2i, that's the initial velocity of object number two, that's the lighter car, is positive 100 kilometers per hour. What else we got here? The heavier car, that's the first car. We're going to say V2f is negative 25.0 kilometers per hour. And we're looking for V... Sorry, that's V1F, isn't it? The heavier car, V1F. We're looking for the velocity of the lighter car after the collision here. Okay, let's set it up the way we always set these up. PI equals PF. Let's say M1, V1I plus M2, V2I. Two objects, two terms. Equals M1, V1F plus M2, V2F. Two objects, two terms. Fifteen hundred times. I'm going to say negative one hundred because I can use kilometers per hour if I want. Plus twelve hundred times a positive one hundred equals fifteen hundred times negative twenty-five plus twelve hundred times V2F. All right, let's figure this out now. Now we're going to say 1,500 times negative 100. We're going to add to that brackets 1,200 times 100. On the left-hand side here, I've got negative 30,000. On the right-hand side, 
1,500 times negative 25 gives me negative 37,500. And now I'm going to take the 37,500 over by adding. Negative 30,000 plus 37,500. I'm going to divide that by 1,200. And I get 6.25. V2F, 6.25. Is that okay? Now, I don't know if any of you caught this. There's a little bit of an issue with this, with the realism of this, of this, uh, of this answer, right? Carrie, did you catch what it is? Uh, no, no, it slows to 25 kilometers per hour, not by. So that's not the issue. Car number one is going to the south, and car number one continues to go to the south after the collision. So that's north, that's south. Okay, car number one is going to the south before the collision and continues to go south after the collision. Car number two is going north before the collision and continues to go north after the collision. Do they go right through each other? If car number one ends up continuing to go south and car number two and continues to go north, do they end up going right through each other like ghosts or something? Um, so realistically, in a physical world, you couldn't actually have an answer that was positive 6.25 there. Okay? That's not a flaw in what we've done here. That's a flaw in the question that I wrote. Okay? So don't panic about that. But in the real world, that could never happen. Why? Well, in the end, in the real world, this number wouldn't be negative 25. It wouldn't continue moving at 25 to the south. Right? It would probably it would bounce back. Make sense? All right, number seven. Seven is the, that's the gooder here. Love this question, seven. Seven says, a person holding a 15 kilogram gun containing a 50 gram bullet. Well, right away I'm seeing this, 50 gram bullet. Um, I told you the units for speed or velocity didn't really matter for conservation momentum problems because they cancel out. Same deal with mass, but we've got to be consistent. Now, you can use grams for mass and conservation momentum, but if you've got kilograms in one place, you got to have kilograms everywhere, right? Or grams everywhere, one of the two. Person holding this gun containing the bullet is riding on a train that's traveling at 75 kilometers per hour to the east. Uh, the man fires a gun and the bullet moves at 350 meters per second to the east. Oh, look at that. I got a kilometers per hour and I got a meters per second. It doesn't matter which one I use, but I got to use one of the two. Relative to the train, what's the velocity of the gun relative to the ground? Oh, my goodness. It's all this relative to thing that's, that's confusing. I mean, the units are a bit confusing too, but it's all the whole relative thing that's the most confusing. Here's what I want to do. I first of all recognize that we're going to treat this as a conservation of momentum problem because it is an explosion. Right? We watched the video before the break of the guy firing the rifle you know, like this and it recoils into his head, the rifle does, because uh, the total momentum is conserved in an explosion of a gun and a bullet. So I'm going to treat it as a conservation of momentum problem, but I've got to figure out how to deal with this whole relative to the train, relative to the ground thing. What I want you to do here is pick a frame of reference. Pick a frame of reference. Okay? Make it the train. Okay? Pretend that the train isn't moving. Just find everything relative to the train. And then, since we want to find it relative to the ground, deal with that after. But deal with one frame of reference at a time. Right? So, let's say... Uh, we're going to say mass 1, and that's the mass of the gun, is 15.0 kilograms. And we're going to say mass 2, that's the mass of the bullet. That's going to be 0 0.050 kilograms. We're going to say, because we're doing it relative to the train, we're going to say VI is what? The initial velocity of the gun and the bullet both before you fire the gun is what?
Okay? Nope. Relative to the train. Listen, right now the Earth is moving really, really, really fast around the sun. What's your velocity right now relative to the Earth? Zero. Zero. When you're sitting in a train, your velocity relative to the train is zero. Relative to the ground, it's not. We're picking a frame of reference. We could do it relative to the ground. We're choosing to do it relative to the train. Okay, it doesn't really matter. You just got to pick one. Relative to the train, VI would be zero meters per second. All right. Man fires a gun and the bullet moves at 350 to the east relative to the train. We're going to say that V2, because it's the bullet, V2F relative to the train is 350 meters per second. Now, I'm going to solve for V1F, but I'm going to put a little star by that because when I solve for V1F, I'm getting V1F, the velocity of the gun, relative to the train. And what do I want here? Relative to the ground. So let's not worry about relative to the ground right now. Okay, let's get one thing at a time relative to the, relative to the train. Now notice I didn't even use the 75 kilometers per hour yet because I'm pretending the train is not moving right now, right? It's like when I analyze a problem relative to the Earth, which is usually what I do, right? We just assume the speed of the Earth is zero, right? Even though it's not relative to the sun. Relative to the moon, it's something different altogether. Okay, relative to the Earth, um, speed is usually, um, our, that, that's usually the speed we use, okay? Um, we don't pay attention to the speed of the Earth. That's what we're going to do here as well. We're not going to pay attention to the speed of the train yet, okay, yet. All right, let's solve it as a conservation momentum problem. PI equals PF. We're going to say, um, look, the initial momentum is zero, right? The, the bullet and the gun are together. They're on the train with a guy that isn't moving relative to the train. So the initial momentum would be zero. Say MVI if you want, but VI is zero. M1V1F plus M2V2F. M1 is 15, V1F is what we're looking for here. M2 is 0 0.050, V2F is 350 meters per second. All right, prediction time here. What do you think the velocity of the gun is going to be? Not a number. We're not going to come up with an exact number until we punch it into our calculator. But do you think the velocity of the gun is going to be greater or less than 350? Do you think the gun's going to be moving faster or slower than the bullet? Intuitively, we know the gun's going to be moving slower, right? But why? Why is it moving slower? The gun should have the same momentum as the bullet should have, right? So why is the gun moving slower if it's the same momentum? More mass. Right? Same momentum, more mass, going to have a slower velocity. Okay, let's figure out what this is now. Let's say uh, 0 0.05 times 350, divide it, divide it by 15, is it 15? Yeah. Ends up being actually negative 1.17, 1666. So that's the velocity of the gun relative to the train. So 1.16666 to the west. Now, how do we deal with this relative to the ground, which is really what we're looking for here, right? You have solved for what we got started right here, but we don't have the final answer yet. Let me ask you a question. If the train was moving at 75 kilometers per hour to the east relative to the ground, and the gun, now, this is a crazy number for the velocity of the gun, but let's say the gun was moving relative to the train at 75 kilometers per hour to the west. Relative to the ground, how fast would the gun be moving? Zero, right. If you were standing beside the train watching what was going on and you could see what was going on, 
because somehow you have you could do super slow motion with your superhero eyes. If you could see what was going on, train is moving 75 to the east. The gun is moving relative to the train, 75 to the west. The gun would appear to be standing still. It would appear to be floating. That makes sense. So how'd you figure that out? Okay. Okay. So what'd you do? I said you said 75 plus negative 75, or 75 subtract 75. So we'll, we'll go 75 plus negative 75 gives you zero. So let's do that with this, but with different numbers. Let's say uh, 75 kilometers per hour. What is that in meters per second here? 75 divided by 3.6. 20.833 meters per second. So relative to the ground, What did I say that was? 20.833? Okay, that's the velocity of the train. Let's add to that the velocity of the gun. Right? Just like Sam said we'd do if it was 75 kilometers per hour to the west, 75 plus negative 75 gave me zero. 20.833 plus negative 1.6667 gives me... Nineteen point one six or nineteen point two. Does that make sense? We're gonna have a look at a couple multiple choice questions. The first one being number ten. I'm gonna ask you to take sixty seconds, one minute, to do that question right now, please. So have a look at this one. It says a twenty one hundred kilogram car collides with a twelve hundred kilogram car that's at rest. They lock together and move off with a speed of four point five. It's the initial speed of the van. What kind of problem are we dealing with there? What's going on? Two cars collide. When two cars collide, the first thing we think of is conservation of momentum, right? Now, what else could we think of? The total momentum remains the same, but the momentum of each individual object changes. So if we wanted to analyze one car or the other, we could take a look at impulse. But since we're going to analyze the whole system, we'll look at conservation of momentum. It's an isolated system, no external forces, so we're going to say that conservation of momentum applies here. M1, 2,100 kilograms. M2, we're going to say it's 1,200 kilograms. V2I is zero meters per second because it's at rest. Um, they lock together, they stick together, so we're going to say VF, the one final velocity that we have, is 4.50 meters per second. And we're looking for the initial speed, the initial velocity, V1i, of the 2,100 kilogram van. Why is it, why is it only one term afterwards there? Why is it only MVF? It's been a little while since we've seen that now. Yeah? Because they combine, they stick together. So we're going to say 2,100 kilograms times V1i, that's what we're looking for. We're going to just cross this out because uh, 1,200 times zero is zero. They stick together, the combined mass is 3,300 kilograms times 4.50. Multiply these two numbers together, divided by 21. And what do we end up getting there? Thank you, Sam. 7.07 .07 mm. meters per second. Good. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Number 13. Give you about a minute to do that one, please. All right, let's have a look now. Uh, 13 says an empty freight car of mass M, mass M, um, whatever value that is. Coast along a track at 2 meters per second until it couples. What's that word couples mean? Going to a dance as a couple? Oh, well, kind of. You couple together, you hold hands, you stick together. Right? It couples to a stationary freight car, it sticks together. Right? It joins to a stationary freight car of mass 2m. Uh, we don't know what any of the masses are, we just know the mass of the second freight car is twice the mass of the initial freight car. 
What's the final speed of them immediately after the collision? This is a conservation momentum problem again because it's a collision. Uh, we're, we've got a problem in that we don't know what the masses are, but we'll deal with that if we can. I'm just going to say M1 is M. I'm going to say M2 is 2M. It's the best I can do right now. I'm going to say that V1I, that's the light freight car, 2 meters per second, I'm going to say V2I, that's the heavier car, is at rest, before the collision, that is. Uh, we want to find the final, the final speed or the final velocity of them after they stick together. So I'm going to say PI equals PF. I'm going to say M1 V1I plus M2 V2I equals uh, MVF. I'm going to say MT there, though. Um, do you see why I'm saying MT? Usually I just call it M. Do you know why I'm calling it MT this time? Yeah, yeah, it's total, but it's always total there when I do that, right? Usually I just call it M, though. I don't want to get it mixed up here with the other Ms. There's too many Ms, right? There's an, there's an M, there's a 2M. I don't want to get this mixed up with one of those Ms, so let's call it something different, MT. M1, uh, M, that's the best I can do. V1I is 2. This is 0. What's the total mass here? If the mass of one of them is m and one of them is 2m, what's the total mass? What is it? 3m. Well, how do I solve for vf when I got two unknowns here? Oh, what can I do? What just became obvious to us? I wrote that down. Caitlin? Uh, yeah, I can move 3M over. Yeah, I can do that. But how do I solve for VF when I've got two variables in there, M and VF? Yep. Yeah, I can cross off M. I can't cross off M and 2M, but I can cross off M and M. So 3 goes over by dividing. VF ends up being equal to 0 0.667. How many people got that? Good. Recognize you cancel out the masses? Anybody make up a value for mass for M? If you did that, that would be okay, right? As long as you made the other one twice the value for it. One more. Number 14. Take a look at that one for, I'll give you a little bit more time on this one. It's a little bit more challenging. Take a quick look here. Number 14 says, two boys, Ted and Larry, initially at rest, push each other on a frictionless surface, Ted is a mass of 40, Larry is 60. After the boys push each other apart, Ted is at 6 meters per second. Uh, we don't know how fast Larry's moving, but we know he's going to be moving in the opposite direction, right? This is like an explosion. Fire the gun, the bullet goes one way, the gun goes the other. Uh, bomb explodes, one piece goes one way, the other piece goes the other way. Okay, Ted and Larry at rest on the floor, they push each other, um, and one goes one way, one goes the other way. That's a conservation momentum problem, but we're not actually looking for a number here. We're looking for just a comparison of Ted and Larry's momentum and or kinetic energy. Well, let's look at both of those, momentum and kinetic energy, and see if we can identify right away what the answer is. Um, what do we know about the momentum of Ted and Larry right now? They start with zero, right? They start with zero. They're at rest on this frictionless surface. They have no momentum. They push each other apart. Ted goes one way with a certain momentum. Larry goes the other way with the same momentum, right? They have the same momentum. So the answer is not going to be A or B because Ted has to have the same momentum as Larry. We don't know how much it is, but we know that it's going to be the same momentum. What about kinetic energy? What do we know about the kinetic energy of both of those guys? What have you learned about kinetic energy in a collision? Bit of a trick question. What have you learned about kinetic energy in a collision? Uh, no, it's not what you've learned about it in a collision. The trick is that you've learned nothing about kinetic energy in a collision. We don't know how the kinetic energy is going to compare. We know that momentum is conserved. We don't know that kinetic energy is conserved or not conserved or any of the above. So we've got to do something to figure out kinetic energy. Let's calculate kinetic energy. All right, let's do that. The kinetic energy of 
Ted or of Larry is one half of the mass of Larry times the speed of Larry squared. The kinetic energy of Ted is one half of the mass of Ted times the speed of Ted squared. All right. Mass of Larry. Uh, Larry is 60 kilograms. Uh, we don't know his speed. All right, that's not very helpful. What about Ted? The mass of Ted is 40 kilograms. The speed of Ted afterwards is 6 meters per second. All right, we can find the kinetic energy of Ted. 6 squared is 36 times 20. 720 joules. All right. Well, what are we going to do to find the kinetic energy of Larry? What do we know applies here? Okay, we, we looked at this at the very beginning of this question. Okay, it wasn't just givens. It was a matter of what do we know about this. We talked about it. We identified that it's, a, it's, a, it's an explosion, just like the, the gun firing. Momentum of one is equal to the momentum of the other. It's a conservation momentum problem. So let's get that. Let's say that the initial momentum is zero. The final momentum is m. I'm going to use a little bit different subscripts here. Mass of Larry, velocity of Larry final. So Larry is 60. I don't know what his velocity is. Ted is 40 times 6. So you solve for this. It ends up being equal to, I think, negative 4 meters per second. So... So Larry is moving at 4 meters per second after the little explosion here. Let's sub in 4 for that then. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 30, I think, is 480. Oh, wait. What do we know now? Larry has less kinetic energy than Ted. Larry has less kinetic energy than Ted. 